I'm Rick Falkvinge. Thank you for inviting me here. Thank you for uh, arranging the conference. Why are you here? Come on, it's a simple question. Why are you here? Who in their right bloody mind would think that you can actually create a new political party and make some kind of difference? You're, 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 the Pirate Party is the laughing stock of the community. I mean, come on, what are you trying to accomplish here? Why aren't you acting like normal citizens, going about your daily business, clenching the fist in your pocket and then going shopping groceries like everybody else? I'll tell you why I'm here. 120 years ago, a couple of young activists decided that it was wrong and unjust that individuals didn't have liberties against the king or the church. At that point, loyalty either lied with the king or the church. There was no middle ground. And these activists were ridiculed by the entire community. They're just a couple of young spoiled brats who want everything for free and they don't want to obey their elders like, like we were raised to do. We are respectable people. So, but after, after a while, these activists, liberals as they call themselves then, try to explain that now it's not just about not obeying the king or the church. It's a little bit bigger than that. Let us explain. And so, 120 years ago, these activists brought new ideas to the table across the world. And what happened was quite remarkable. Where it used to be that the po political poles had been the king and the church. All of a sudden, the king and the church became one pole, the old, conservative, and the new pole became the liberals. So it was, all of a sudden it was the old versus the new, and you had to position yourself on this scale. And the liberal movement, which had been around for some time, but politicized around 1890 across the world, established new ideas that we take for granted today. Eighty years ago, a couple of young activists were being rebellious against their employers. The, they were starting to talk about workers' rights and all kinds of dumb stuff. And the, the uh, established and respectable citizens at the time said that these are just a couple of young brats who want everything for free and they want high wages and they're not content with their lives like we were and they should do. And the, the young activists weren't really content with that kind of label, that they weren't taken seriously. So they went ahead and started a political party. It was called, it's got different names in different countries, but it started all over Europe. And in fact, in fact, in fact or most over the world. Um, the establishment went absolutely mad. They were like, you can't start a political party because you want higher wages. Are you out of your minds? But the young activists sat down calmly and, and said to them, well, it's a little bit larger than that. Let us explain. And what happened was quite remarkable. It used to be that the political polls were the conservatives and the liberals. All of a sudden, the conservative and liberal joined to be the old poll, and the Workers' Party became the new poll. After this event, if you were political, you had to position yourselves between the conservative liberal poll and the Workers' Poll. In, ma in many countries, this is left to right scale. In some countries, the conservative to liberal is the left to right scale. That didn't re reword the left to right. So that was 120 years ago and 80 years ago. 40 years ago, a couple of 
young activists in a land of progress. Progress was a holy word. And this was right after the war, and people were really optimistic. There were progress everywhere. Progress was a holy word. Escape was a shameful word. And these young activists in a land where if you invented new chemicals, you would be branded a hero and got medals out of the king's hand. In this land, a couple of activists said that, well, maybe we shouldn't work this much. Maybe, maybe we should invent less. Well, at least that's what the establishment heard. And they were, the establishment again went mad. These activists are running around in circles and giving people dangerous ideas that we should work less. Are, they, are these hippies out of their minds? But these hippies said that, well, our ideas are a little bit more complicated than that. We are talking in terms of an eco ecologically sustainable society. Let us sit down and explain. But they tried to explain, and the establishment didn't listen, so they founded a new political party across Europe, actually, and across most of the rest of the world. And again, these respected elders went absolutely batshit insane as they say, you can't start a new party because you want to work less. You're not responsible. You're not serious. But they were serious. And they did start a new political party. And they got into parliament, most parliaments across the world, as the Green Party, who are now setting the agenda for new ideas that they brought to the table. History moves in cycles. Every 40 years, a new generation reconquers democracy. We are here because we have chosen that it's our turn. We have seen the need to reconquer democracy. And like every generation before us, we are initially mocked. We are deliberately misunderstood. Like every generation before us, the so-called respected elders say that we just want things for free. <coughs> We can't start a party for this purpose, and yet people vote for us. Yet we are getting into parliaments, and yet, and yet we are starting to make a difference. We are starting to shift the world, and policies are slowly, slowly starting to change. It's like. It's like when you start to turn a ship. When you're on a really big ship and it starts to cross against the wind into a new direction, there's this cranking and creaking in the, in, in the woodworks. And if you haven't heard it before, it's really uncomfortable. It's, it's scaring a lot of people and they're not wondering what's going on and they haven't heard this kind of noise before. And then all of a sudden, as you're approaching the eye of the wind, it's the first sail way up front, which no, it's so obscure, nobody even knows what his name is, goes plop into the new wind direction. And everybody wonders, what was that? <coughs> then the next one, plop, and plop. And slowly, this big ship starts turning into the wind. It hasn't turned against the wind yet. We're not in a new direction. But politicians are starting to take notice.